Ladies and gentlemen, it's the pleb. In tonight's story, Justin Trudeau caves in on the carbon tax and takes a massive L. Trudeau announces that he's getting rid of the carbon tax on home and heating oil in Atlantic Canada and hands Pierre Polyev a massive win. As well, tonight, Pierre Polyev comes out saying he wants to ban vaccine mandates forever in Canada and the left have an absolute meltdown. As well, tonight, Sophie Gregoire leaves Justin Trudeau for a man. Who is he? We have the details. Stick around. Today's episode has been brought to you by Beaver Bitcoin, Canada's best Bitcoin exchange. Do you want to protect yourself from governments who freeze people's bank accounts? Or how about banks who shut people's bank accounts down for absolutely no reason? Protect yourself against authoritarians and own some Bitcoin. If you want to do so, head over to beaverbitcoin.com. The link is in the description below. Thank you for sponsoring this channel and let's start tonight's report. Happy Friday, everyone. TGIF. Let's kick off the weekend together laughing at clown world. But before we get to all this, like Trudeau basically admitting that the carbon tax was a failure or watching the left meltdown over Pierre Polyev wanting to ban mandates, we're going to continue our story from last episode where I gave a shout out to an up and coming creator named um, Red Pill North. He was very thankful for me, so thankful he tweeted to thank you to me multiple times, but he also made this video for me, which is a remix of my shout out for him. Watch this. Tonight, we're going to lead off tonight's story with a couple of laughs before we get to the serious stuff. What does that mean? <laughs> I discovered a new creator. I love this. I love I love discovering uh, smaller accounts who put out really good content that I can feature on my channel. Thank you. This account is called Red Pill North. Red Pill underscore North on X. Man, the dude was so thankful that I gave him a shout out on my channel that he literally remixed Pierre eating an apple in my studio. So funny and so good, man. I appreciate you, Red Pill North. But did you guys notice how many followers he had when we shouted him out on my channel the other day? I gave him a shout out on the channel. He had 297 followers here. Do you guys want to know how much he has now? The dude now has what? 1,763 followers. 1,763 followers in just a couple of days after we shouted him out on this channel. But he deserves the shout out because just look at the work he's producing. Got nothing but love. And I love using my platform to make smaller accounts get bigger. Let's consider it the pleb effect. So I don't know if you guys were following this week, but Pierre Polyev came out in the House of Commons trying to put forth a bill to ban vaccine mandates forever in Canada. And the left are absolutely losing it. Watch this clip of Pierre Polyev. He had the temerity to go on television about three months ago and claim he had never forced anyone to get vaccinated. Yes, he, he did. He claims that it should be a matter of personal choice. He wanted us all to forget the way he divided and insulted and named called millions of people right across this country, patriotic, law-abiding, decent people. So if he really believes he never forced mandates on anyone, surely he'll be happy to vote for this bill to ensure that those mandates don't apply anymore and will never be reimposed again. Let's go. Let's go. Lockdowns were evil. Mandates were evil, and these things literally destroyed people's lives. And worse, it split our country apart. Never again will we go through this. And thank you, Pierre Polyev, for actually trying to ban them forever in Canada. 
And with that Pierre Polyev clip going viral, I could not help myself but go viral as well with this tweet, which really, really upset the left and all these people who just love their vaccines. Now, I tweeted out here, the majority of Canadians who got vaccinated did so because they were forced to. This is not up for debate. I'm not just bullshitting. I'm not just gaslighting here. The majority of people who took this vaccine wanted to get their normal lives back. They wanted to travel. They wanted to be able to keep their jobs and f feed their families. What was the alternative? Of course they were forced. Coercion is a form of force. This tweet that I put out definitely pushed some buttons on the left. So much so that Rachel Gilmore, good old Rachel, came out and attacked me here. <laughs> That's what she's saying. I'm once again reminding folks that the pleb is an attention-seeking troll who used to beg me for feet pics in my replies. He is not a reporter and has never been. He's a grifter trying to make money, YouTube AdSense money, by taking advantage of people's trust. You're wrong, Rachel. I'm not trying to make AdSense money taking advantage of people's trust. I'm trying to make AdSense money making fun of people like you. And guess what? I'm absolutely crushing it. How's unemployment treating you? But it wasn't just Rachel Gilmore. It was people like Jane Daly here who writes, this is who Pierre Polyev and the conservatives are talking to when they lie and continue to talk about mandates like they're real. What, the mandates are not real? Okay. F off with your mega stupidity. I don't want that ish in my government. Morons on parade. Okay, pretty unhinged tweet. This doesn't make much sense, logically. But you know what? This person knows they are wrong. You want to know why I know they are wrong? Because they turn the comments off. They turn the comments off. Anyone who turns the comments off automatically loses. And people like Joe Canada, who has no space per hate, according to his profile picture, came out and quote tweeted me, very triggered, saying, you know what's not up for debate? That you're a piece of garbage. Well, that tweet got itself ratioed here at 132 comments versus 31 likes. A bloodbath. I then proceeded to put on what is probably one of the most vicious ratios I have ever put on on X, guys. Look at this. <laughs> Look at this ratio here. It's always people with this profile picture posting the most hateful things. The irony is astounding. So look at this 31 likes and the pleb replies with the person's profile picture and gets 537 likes. An absolute crime scene. But then this dummy tries to reply to me again and gets ratioed yet again with five likes to 119 replies here saying, you're mistaken, I have nothing but hate for right-wing bags like yourself. I support those who need it, not the stains on the human race. Almost every single reply that replied to that last tweet ratioed the guy. I can't cover them all, but I will cover my favorite one here from Michael, <laughs> who literally just... <laughs> Look at this here. This is just the absolute best. Ah, oh, F off. This is so good. Oh, man, it's perfect. He literally circles the no space for hate as the profile picture and then <laughs> underlines, I have nothing but hate. <laughs> <It's> too... <laughs> Don't you just love when the radical woke left contradict themselves and expose themselves for the hypocrites that they truly are? Please don't stop being yourselves and feeding this channel material. You guys are absolutely great. In our next story, Justin Trudeau basically comes out and admits that he was wrong about the carbon tax, where he announces in this press conference that he's canceling the carbon tax on home and heating oil and basically giving Pierre Polyev another massive political victory. Let's watch this announcement. Today, we are announcing a three-year pause on the federal pollution price on heating oil so that we can give everyone the time and ability to switch to heat pumps. Pierre Polyev was right again. Pierre Polyev was right about the carbon tax. Pierre Polyev was right about housing. Man, I just love how Pierre Polyev makes this guy react to everything he wants. It's amazing. <laughs> Don't 
don't you just love it when the liberals admit that they were wrong? Because that's what Justin Trudeau just did. Now, many people had many takes about this carbon tax after Trudeau's announcement. Twitter literally went abuzz. But through all the hot takes and all the cringe posts, I was able to find some gold from a gentleman by the name of Quick Dick McDick, who is a bearded farmer from Saskatchewan, has possibly one of the best takes on the carbon tax I've ever seen. Let's watch his destruction of Justin Trudeau's carbon tax together. So I get in for processing calves, make some sausage and eggs. And I hear this. Today, we are announcing a three-year pause on the federal pollution price on heating oil so that we can give everyone the time and ability to switch to heat pumps. <laughs> Why do people need time to switch to electric heat pumps? But they need a break off of heating oil from your carbon tax to do it. Because according to you and your government, you get back more than you pay with this tax. Are you admitting that that's bullshit? Because it is. I've ranted about it for years. Now switching to an electric heat pump from oil heating, which is very vulnerable to volatile global market prices, can save people a lot of money. Yeah, well, you guys keep pushing wind and solar, which are completely unreliable. And then when it's cold and it's dark and there's no wind blowing, everyone's going to have to pay a fortune to try and get electricity to their heat pumps and their electric cars. So the second part of our announcement today is that piloting in the Atlantic, we're working with provinces to install a free heat pump for people who are making at or below median household Income. Free for who? Who is it free for? It's not free. Exactly. It's not free. Nowhere on planet Earth is there anything that's free. You know what I'm saying? Why can't the left understand this? There is nothing for free in this world. Nothing is free. McDick is right. Somewhere, somebody has to pay for the thing that you're getting. Yes. In this case, it's the government. Do you know where the government gets its money from? Right, it's right here in your wallet. Your wallet, my wallet, everybody's wallet. We are paying for this. And to encourage people to sign so up good. for the change, we're providing a $250 incentive payment. <laughs> That's money in your pocket right now. If the government gives you $250, that $250 has come from somewhere that is not the government because the government doesn't have a wallet that they're pulling out, that they've just got their own money that they're giving to you. That $250 has come from somewhere, probably in the western part of the country where we exist, where most of us heat our homes with propane or natural gas, which are not going to be a part of this three-year pause on the carbon tax. We're just going to keep getting push-popped out here. Hey, you didn't know about that one, guys. <laughs> Yeah, you didn't know about that one, guys, because half of them just looked at each other and been like, how, how are we going to pay for that? How's that going to work? And for everyone else, we've got an enhanced program that will deliver heat pumps up front to be paid off with the savings you'll be getting over the coming years. We are switching to heat pumps off home heating oil as a region in Atlantic Canada so and as a country. A 60 by 120 house slash shop combination in the middle of Saskatchewan, minus 40 for two weeks. Can you do it with a heat pump? No one will do it for me. Been planning a build for the last couple of years, not one person will do it for me. So what do I do? Just keep getting tacked? And one more thing, today we are doubling from 10 to 20%, the rural top-up that people get as part of their quarterly pollution price rebates. You wanna talk about doubling? This guy not only doubles my blood pressure, but he doubles my natural gas bill because in Saskatchewan, what I pay for natural gas, I also pay an equal amount of carbon tax on that natural gas, and then I get taxed on that carbon tax. I pay a tax on a tax. How, how is that? How's that fair? Oh, look at that. 
That's Lawrence McCauley in the background, all right? Federal Agriculture Minister of Canada. Bill C-234 right now is hung up in Senate because they're all saying, okay, well, we can exempt you guys from carbon tax on grain drying. Oh, but when it comes to your barns and your shops and everything, well, there's different things that you can do to make things better, and so we're just not going to exempt those. Atlantic Canada, no, oh, fuck it, we'll exempt you from everything. <laughs> To my friends in Eastern Canada, I hope you can see what's happening right now. You're, you're, you're being bought. He's pulling shitty over there and he's on his way out and hanging on to strings and he's purchasing you, your vote, with everyone else's money. Uh Do you think this will even save him though, guys? Let me know in the chat down below or in the comments. Do you think this last ditch effort from Trudeau can even save him from these terrible polling numbers? I hope you can see this going on. I'm not much for splitting the country apart, but this is the kind of shit that makes people want to just be a separate entity in Western Canada. And I don't say this very often, <laughs> but I sure do like seeing fuck Trudeau flags flying around when he starts pulling shit like this. <laughs> this country is so divided. That guy's job is, is to bring us together not push us apart and drive wedges between us, but that's all he's done. And that's all he continues to do. Urban, rural, east, west, and this guy just keeps pushing us farther and farther and farther apart. If we want to start fixing what's wrong with Canada, that guy needs to go. Facts. I'm going to have a shower, which I'm going to use natural gas to heat the water, which I'm going to have to pay carbon tax on. And I'm taking a shower beer. I hope you guys see this for what it is. Enjoy your shower beer, King. Man, quick dick my dick nails it. Trudeau is just using our money to fulfill his utopia vision of woke Canada. And we are suffering as a result. What do you guys think of quick dick my dick's video there? Do you guys agree with him? Let me know in the comments down below. In our last story, crazy juicy details came out about Sophie Gregoire's new boyfriend and Justin Trudeau's divorce. Now, this meme could not be more accurate because it appears that Sophie Gregoire Trudeau left Justin Trudeau for a man. It's true. Sophie Gregoire Trudeau is dating a Ottawa surgeon by the name of Marcos Batoli. It appears that Sophie Gregoire Trudeau has started dating men again. Good for her. Now, according to the National Post, they've been dating for over five months. And all these photo ops that I'm about to show you are from the time where Sophie Gregoire Trudeau had a new boyfriend. Yup. Everything you guys saw from the Queen's Court, the King's coronation to Joe Biden's visit were all an absolute sham. Yeah, the person who wrote this tweet called Justin Trudeau an actor, and you're going to see why. Because this clip was from five months ago and they weren't even together anymore. Justin Trudeau and his wife, his wife had a new boyfriend. And they were parading around pretending to still be in love. Absolutely crazy. I already knew this was awkward at the time, but now with context, it'll make it even more awkward. Just look at this. So unnatural. It's so unnatural, right? Oh my God. This, <laughs> look at the body language between both of them. The signs were there. We, hey man, we knew this a long time ago. Or how about this picture of Justin Trudeau and his wife together when Joe Biden and Jill Biden, the president and uh, first lady visited Canada. Just look at them together taking this photo op in March, 2023 when she was still living with another man. Absolutely crazy. Everything is fake. Everything is acting. Our politicians, none of it is real. Or how about this happy anniversary post from Justin Trudeau? They were not even together during this post as well. But the funniest part is that this post from Justin Trudeau saying happy anniversary has now been hit by community notes. This is a proposed community note, so it's not published yet, but it says, this is a, a staged PR photo. The couple was already separated as early as previous April, and Sophie was in a new relationship. Even Justin Trudeau's relationship or fake marriage is not safe from community notes. Thank you, Elon Musk, for keeping the internet honest. I absolutely love community notes. All right.
Here is today's question. We're going to wrap up this video, but this is going to be a loaded question for today. And I want to know in the comments what you think. Now that we know that Justin Trudeau was separated from his wife, his wife was actually living with another man and he was still pretending to be with her. Does that make Justin Trudeau a cuck or a cuckold? I don't know. Like, technically, shouldn't that be cuckolding? Let me know in the comments down below if you think Trudeau is a cuck or not. All right, if you made it this far and you're not subscribed already, smash the subscribe button because no one watches a video this long that they did not enjoy. As well, make sure to smash the like button on this video. Share it out. Buy a membership to my channel. My name is The Pleb. This was today's report, and I'll see you at the next one. Peace.